To study for your upcoming assignment, you have placed two of your favorite textbooks, one on top of another, on your table as shown. Okay? Mass book one is 600 grams. Mass book two is 300 grams, coefficient of kinetic friction. Kinetic is when there's uh, relative motion between the two surfaces. Uh, between book one and the table is point two. That's why you have G and one. G for, gra uh, G for ground, one for probably book one. It makes sense, point two. Uh, coefficient of static friction between book one and book two is 1.2. Right? And they have one and two because it's the friction between book one and two and point three. And it makes sense because uh, usually static is bigger than uh, kinetic for similar materials. All right, use 9.81 meters second squared for G. Find the Newton's F max. F max. Maximum force with which you can push the book at the bottom, book one such that the books slide together on the table without the book on the top, i.e. book two, sliding off. All right, so for this, first thing we can do is draw a picture. I know normally pictures are supplied, but drawing a picture is good, both for our understanding as we kind of walk through what's going on, and just general first step for everything in physics. All right, so we have an external force. I'm gonna call this force external. We also have friction. Nope, need a better contrasting color. Orange it is. I'm going to call this block book one. So I'm going to call this force friction one. And then, since this whole thing is going to be accelerating off to the right, I'm going to draw up here force friction two. And before we get too carried away and too crazy here, this force friction two is acting on uh, book or block number two on top but it's doing that by pushing off the block on the bottom this is kind of counterintuitive so as the system is moving this there has to be a force being pushed this way but it's not like this external force you're getting some mysterious boost from this force of friction up here too you're gonna have it's gonna cause a friction down here. So this is going to be, um, I'll call this force friction one, two is going the opposite direction. And your first time I'd be like, wow, that feels kind of crazy. I haven't seen that before. Why don't we have a force friction like this on the earth going that direction? I guess they say table. I'm still going to say earth. And you do. So the idea is when you're pushing a block on the ground, you're actually rotating the earth as well. Earth is really big it's not noticeable. So, but there is gonna be this other force as well. So when you do push a block on the earth, the friction of the earth pushing towards you, there's also a force of you from the whatever block you're pushing, pushing on the earth. So this nuance will come in handy in a sec. So we wanna find the maximum force which we can push the book, the bottom block. So we're going to look at the sum of all forces. We're going to start by looking at sum of all forces in just the x direction. So I'll do sum of all forces in the x direction is equal to, and we're going to just add the left forces, subtract, or add the right forces, subtract the left forces. Um, you can basically, yes. So, and then all those sum, the sum of all forces is going to equal mass times acceleration. So we're going to have force external minus force of friction one. And then what we would do then is we'd say plus force friction two minus force friction one two. And these are really gonna be equal and opposite here. And so these are just gonna cancel each other out. Basically forces that are internal to the system, they're, they're not gonna have an, a, an effect on the system. So I'm going to do a line zero and this is going to equal mass i'm going to call this mass total because it's the total mass times acceleration all right so this is going to be our first equation i'm going to rewrite it once just for clarity so we have force external minus force friction one equals i'm going to write this mass one plus mass two because that's the total mass times acceleration so the question is then, 
We don't know force external and we don't know acceleration. We can find force of friction one because we know the formula for force of friction. And we're going to start writing these out. Um, gray. Nope, just used gray. We'll do green. So force of friction one. This is the friction between the ground and the blocks and, and block one. And so this is going to be mu. I'm going to use kinetic because it's moving, motion, kinetic. Uh, times the mass, so uh, it's going to be mu times force normal, which we could find by setting the uh, sum of all forces in the y direction. We said equal to zero because there's no motion in the y direction. But I know this is going to be mass times gravity, so it's going to be mu k mass one plus mass two, because both blocks are pushing down. So that is our force of friction one. I'm going to call force of friction two this one up here. Now, it's not, we don't have force of friction 2 up here, but it's going to be valuable data in a sec. And that's just going to be mu s, because it's static. There's no relative motion between block 1 and 2, times mass 2, that's mass of block 2, times gravity, which I totally forgot up there, but I put it right there. All right, times gravity. And we know that that is going to equal mass times acceleration of this block. Now we're going to assume that the bottom block has the same acceleration as the top block. So these A's are actually the same. Um, that's going to be M2. And so if we look at this, if we assume that we assume these A's are the same, they are, um, we can look at this formula here. The mass 2's cancel. And we find that acceleration is going to be coefficient of static friction times gravity. All right, so now we have two equations, two unknowns and we can plug these in and solve. So we're going to take this equation right here, force external minus, I'm going to, and for force of friction one, I'm just going to write this out, minus mu k mass one plus mass two times gravity equals, and then on the other side we have mass one plus mass two times acceleration, which we know is mu s times gravity. All right, doing some algebra. We have force external equals mass one plus mass two times coefficient of static friction times gravity. And that static is between one and two. Plus mu k mass one plus mass two times gravity. I'm gonna factor out a mass one plus mass two and gravity. Mass one plus mass two times gravity times mu s plus mu k. Plugging in some numbers, mass one is 0.3 kilograms. Uh, mass two is 0.6 kilograms. Gravity, we're gonna assume is 9.81 meters per second squared. And then mu s uh, is 0 0.2, I think it's 0 0.3. It doesn't matter because we're using both. Uh, and then mu kinetic is 0.2. And then going to Wolfram, we'll do, uh, let's see, 0 0.3 times, uh, did I forget it already? I already forgot it. 0 0.3 plus 0 0.6, yep. 0 0.3 plus 0 0.6, which gives us 0 0.9. Multiply that times gravity. I'll put a zero in there just for consistency. It doesn't matter. Wow times, and then we're going to do 0 0.3 plus, oh, I forgot the zeros, I know. You're like, it doesn't matter. It, it, it does to me. It does to me. All right, and so then we get a final answer of 4.41, and therefore our maximum force external, because friction, the force of friction that we use, this formula, that gives you the maximum force of friction. It can always be less. It can always be closer to zero. The magnitude two can be less. And we got an answer of 4.41 newtons. Yes. And so to kind of backtrack what we did here, we, I had no idea where this was going. You start by drawing a picture. It, or if a picture's already drawn, you start drawing on the picture. You write down everything you know. In this case, we looked at the sum of all forces in the x direction. Um, we then looked at the acceleration required to basically get the box to fall off the back, which we said we did found using force of friction two. We said that th those two accelerations would be the same. Acceleration of the top box and acceleration of the bottom box are the same, so we set them equal. We then 
use do some substitution to two equations, two unknowns, algebra, and solve. Then we got 4.41. Hope that helped. See you next time.